So let's just solve for this sample problem right here for you to understand our lesson better. So for this illustrative example, we are to determine the product of inertia about the centroidal axis. So once again, the general formula for our product of inertia Pxy, that is to be equal to the integral of x, y, d, a. But in today's video lecture, I mean in this video, we wouldn't be making use of this. Instead, we would be making use of the transfer formula. So using the transfer formula, let's say our P, X, Y, that is to be equal to P, X, Y bar plus A, X, Y. So this would be the transfer formula that we would be using for us to solve the product of inertia where this one right here is to be the centroidal product of inertia of your basic shapes so if you would be using this equation right here as defined in this um, sentence right here this equation forms the basis of the method of computing products of inertia for areas composed of simple geometric shapes and as you can see here this section right here comprises of basic geometric shapes which are um, rectangles respectively. And another note, so by the way, your PXY once again is also equal to your IXY. It's just that this designation right here came from the book that I am, um, that is actually my basis for this subject, which is the um, Engineering Mechanics, Statics and Dynamics, third edition by Ferdinand Singer. But in some books, your product of inertia is indicated by this designation right here, which is Ixy. Okay, so using, once again, this equation right here, similarly with the method of us determining the moment of inertia about the certain axis, so what we would be doing is that we would be getting the um, centroidal product of inertia of these basic shapes right here, and we would be transferring it to this point right here. So similarly, once again, with your, I mean, with the solution in getting the moment of inertia using transfer formula, we would be dividing this section right here into distinguishable uh, basic shapes. So in my case, I would just be dividing it here. So let's say that this is to be my dividing line. So I would be dividing it here. And I also would be dividing it here. So it would be up to you on how you would be dividing this. So you can actually divide it here or the one I did earlier. And I think this one is better, so let's just stick with this uh, division right here. Okay, and next step is just, I mean, is that we would be labeling these parts right here. So let's say that this is to be um, one. So let's say that this is to be one. Let's say that this is to be section two. This one right here in the middle. And this one right here is to be our rectangle 3. So once again, using this equation right here, what we would be doing is that we would be getting the sum of all of these uh, products of inertia using this transfer formula. So basically, we would just be getting this summation right here. And if we are to get that summation right there, so this is also the summation and this is also to be the summation. So for the centroidal product of inertia about this point, so that is to be the summation of pxy that is to be equal to so we would just be uh, getting it part by part so for our first section right here i mean first rectangle right here which is number one using this equation right here so we would be getting first the centroidal product of inertia of this section right here and the centroidal product of inertia of this section right here which is well this one right here is to be equal to zero so why is that the case so if you can remember in the last video or in the introductory part of this video it is said in this part right here that the product of inertia is zero with respect to axis of symmetry which i have proven in this part of the lecture right here so there and as you can see this is a rectangular figure so it means that if you are to get its centroidal axis it would be an axis of symmetry Thus, its product of inertia would be equal to zero. And then, for its transfer formula, it would be this one right here. So, for us to transfer it to this point right here in the middle, this is to be your 
uh, y bar so this is to be your y bar and this is to be your bar x or x bar so for us to determine bar x so by the way um, if this i mean the whole dimension here so from this tip right here up to this middle part right here that is to be 30 divided by 2 since the, this is to be 30 mm and 30 divided by 2 is equal to 15 mm so writing it once again here so this one right here is to be 15 mm 15 mm but take note guys that this one right here is to be half of 5 mm and half of 5 mm is to be 2.5 mm thus 15 mm minus 2.5 mm would give you an answer of 12.5 mm so we would be adding it here so plus 2.5 mm but take note guys that this x component right here i mean x lever arm right here is towards the left so meaning our bar x would be negative so negative 2.5 Oops, by the way, we forgot to solve something here. So you have forgotten the um, value of A. So let's just solve for the value of A first. So the area of this part right here is to be equal to 30 mm times 5 mm. So writing it here, this is for the area. So 5 times 30. So this is for the area. And as for our X, this is to be negative 12.5 mm. So once again, that is to be 15 mm minus 2.5 mm just to get this distance right here. So there. And that we would be multiplying this by our bar y. And our bar y is to be equal to, um, so as you can see here, this is to be 40 mm. And half of 40 mm is to be 20 mm. So 20 mm is to be this part right here. So that is 20 mm. And for us to get the value of bar y, so that is to be 20 mm minus half of 5, which is this part right here to leave us an answer in this length right here. And 20 mm minus 5 over 2, so looking at the calculator to your left, that is to be equal to, so 20 minus 5 over 2, that is to, I mean that should be 17.5, so 17.5 mm. And since it is upward, so this should be 17. 5 mm which is positive so i will just be rewriting it since my penmanship in that time was well subpar so yeah 17.5 mm so this is for this first one right here but by the way i would just be changing the color of the whole of that for you to understand it better so color coding so once again this that is to be 30 times 5 so this is to be the area and for our bar x this is to be 12.5 and for our bar y that is to be 17.5 but by the way our 12.5 here should be negative so this is to be negative so that is for this first part right here so i would just be erasing this to avoid confusion so now let's focus on this one right here so for section number two and since this is also a rectangle, it means that it is also symmetric to both axes. So meaning our centroidal product of inertia is also 0. So plus 0. So that is to be its centroidal product of inertia. And how about for its transfer formula? So plus. So what would be its area? And its area would be 5 times 30. Since this is to be 5 mm and this area right, I mean this length right here is to be 40 mm minus 5 mm and minus 5 mm so it would be 5 times 30 so i would just be undoing it for it to be neat so 5 times 30 but what about for the lever arm so for the lever arm since the centroid of this rectangle right here is exactly at the centroid of all the figures it means that our x and y components would be 0 and 0 respectively thus these terms right here would just cancel out okay and for number three so once again this is a rectangular shape so meaning our centroidal product of inertia of this certain point right here is equal to zero and we would be adding its transfer formula so the summation of i mean the axy and the area of this rectangle right here is to be equal to so five times 30 so 
plus 5 times 30. And we would be multiplying our lever arms here and our lever arms here would be as follows. So for this part right here, which is bar X, so similarly with the one that we did here at this part right here, that is to be 30 mm divided by 2, which is half of this rectangle right here, and we would be dividing half of this thickness right here, which would be this part right here. So um, 30 divided by 2, that is to be 15 minus 5 over 2, and that is to be 12.5 so 12.5 and since it is towards the right this is to be positive so there and what about for our y bar so this is for our bar y and it is basically the same as this lever arm right here since it is symmetrical in that axis by the way and let's just solve for it so if this is once again 40 mm the whole of this, so from this axis right here up until the bottom part, that is to be 20 mm. So 20 mm. And since for our bar y, we are just concerned with this length right here up until this middle right here, middle part of uh, our rectangle right here, and the middle part of this rectangle right here would be at half of this 5 mm. So this dimension right here at the bottom would be half of 5 which is 2.5 mm so 2.5 mm so i'm not quite sure if you can see what i'm writing right here but that is 2.5 mm so for us to get the bar do i that is to be 20 mm minus 2.5 mm and looking once again to the calculator to your left so i have already solved for this earlier so that is to be 17.5 mm but take note that it is going downwards so meaning this should be negative so negative 17.5 so so this is to be the equation that we need for us to get the centroidal product of inertia about of course our centroid so the summation of our product of inertias that is to be equal to so looking at the calculator to your left so 0 plus 30 times 5 times negative 12.5 times 17.5 plus well zero plus zero so this would be in red the ones in red so plus and this would be the ones in green so five times 30 times 12.5 times negative 17.5 and this would give us an answer of negative six five six two five millimeters raised to four so if you're not quite sure of, about this unit right here just don't forget to label or all of these terms right here and that would give you this answer right here so that is how you would be solving for the centroidal product of inertia of this certain figure right here but by the way guys if you think this solution right here is quite disorganized or quite messy you can actually solve for this using a more um, organized solution and in that Manner, what I am talking about is that you must tabulate it in this one right here. So if you would be comparing our solution here to this one right here, this is a lot uh, neat and a lot more organized than that of the first one. So it is basically under the same idea as with this one right here. It's just that I have tabulated it. So what you would be doing is that, of course, you must label it as follow. So it would be the same like what I have done earlier and list all of their product of inertia. I mean, their individual products of inertia and list down their areas. So as you can see, this is to be 30 times 5, this is to be 30 times 5, and this is to be 30 times 5, which is as follows. And you would be getting their bar X and bar Y respectively. Just don't forget their sign convention. So for bar x if you would be going to the left those would be negative and if you would be going to the right that is to be positive and for our bar y if you would be going upwards that is to be positive and if you would be going downwards that is to be negative then what you would be doing now i mean what you would be doing next is that you would be multiplying these terms right here which is axy or this one right here or the transfer formula so after doing that list them here on the rightmost then after which just get the summation of your uh, centroidal product of inertia about all of those figures and 
also get the summation of your transfer formula which is AXY which is this one's respectively and after you have done that just add them so 0 plus negative 65625 is equal to negative 65625 millimeter raised to fourth so if you want to impress your teachers or let's say that if you want more organized solution it is better for you to tabulate it in this manner instead of doing it this way so i have just done it this way because i think that you would be understanding it better if i do it this way first before i do this method right here okay but take note guys that this solution right here so what i have done here is that i have solved for the product of inertia of this centroidal axis right here but what if that the one that is um, required in this problem is the product of inertia about this axis right here or let's say that this point right here so here so let's say that this is to be your reference point or and this is to be your reference axis so what should you do so you can actually solve for it in this manner so I have just cleared it up and let's once again let's divide this one right here I mean let's put our reference axis right here so let's say that this is to be x sub 1 and y sub 1 okay so for our product of inertia so by the way let's just divide our um, let's divide our section once again so I would be dividing it here so this is this one right here and this one right here and once again I want this one to be one oops I'm sorry this one to be one this one to be two and this one to be three okay so for number one as you can see here once again this is to be zero since it is a rectangle so that is zero and for the area that is to be 30 times 5 and for this one right here or the bar x that is to be from this axis right here up until the centroid of this which is this one right here and for you to get that that is basically half of 30 so 30 divided by 2 or just 15 mm so 15 mm and as for the bar y so it would be in reference to this axis right here so up until this one right here and as you can see here this is to be 40 mm so we would be subtracting half of this which gives us an answer of 37.5 so that is for bar y for figure one so let's solve for this one later and for our figure two so for two our ixy or pxy is equal to zero and for the area that is also 30 times 5 because this is to be 5 mm and this one right here is to be 40 mm minus 5 mm minus 5 mm so that is to be 30 mm so 30 times 5 and for our board x so it would be this dimension right here i mean this distance right here from this axis right here up until this i mean i mean the centroid of this one right here okay so using that that is to be um 30 mm minus half of 5 mm which would give you an answer of 27.5 mm so there and what about for bar y so it would just be this one right here so if this is to be its centroid this dimension right here is to be half of 40 which is 20 mm so i think it is better for me to erase this since it is getting messy so there this is to be the centroid of this section right here and the vertical distance is to be 20 mm so 20 mm so this is to be positive 20 mm by the way all of these values would be positive since it is to the right and upwards so for this last section right here this is to be um, so number three so our ixy here would be zero and our area here would be also 30 times 5 and for our board x it would be from this distance right here up until 
this point right here at the middle of this section. So for us to do that, that is basically, so what would be the center of this? So I would just be erasing it once again since once again it is getting messy. So for its center right here up until this point, so what can be our approach? So we have many approaches, but I would be doing the first thing that came into my mind. So what I would be doing right here is that I would be getting this total length right here. So from this point up until this point, and that is equal to 30mm plus 30mm minus 5. So we would be subtracting this part right here because this is to be redundant. So 30mm, so 30mm would be this one right here. Or better yet, I think I it, it would be better this way. So from this point of your axis right here up to this point, this is to be equal to 30mm minus 5mm. So 30mm minus 5mm is equal to 25mm. And from this point up until the centroid of your rectangle is equal to half of 30mm which is 15mm. So adding both of this, so 25mm plus 15mm, so that would give you an answer of 40mm. So 40mm. And as for your bar y, so that is just to be this distance right here. So if this is to be your reference, if this is to be your reference axis, it would just be this height right here, which is half of 5mm. And half of 5mm is equal to 2.5mm. Okay, so now solving for all of this, I mean solving for AXY, so we would just be multiplying these last three columns right here. So looking at the calculator to your, to your left, that is to be 30 times 5 times 15 times 37.5, that is to be positive 8. 4, 3, 7, 5. And as for the second one, that is to be so 30 times 5 times 27.5 times 20, that is to be 8 to 500. And as for the last part, that is to be so 30 times 5 times 40 times 2.5, and that is to be equal to. Um, 1,000, I mean 15,000. So, 1,5,0,0,0. Zero, zero, zero. So, getting the summation of all of this. So, for this one right here, the summation of PXY, and that is to be equal to 0. And the summation of our transfer formula. So, summation A bar X and bar Y is equal to... So, 84375 plus 82500 plus 15,000 that is to be 18 so 181875 millimeters raised to fourth so this would be your answer if you want to get the product of inertia about this axis right here so this is just one way so another way is that since we already have the centroidal product of inertia of this section right here which is this one right here so by the way i would just be copying this one first to the next slide so that i can erase this so once again we have already solved for the product of inertia about its centroidal axis so i would just be moving it here so this is to be the centroidal product of inertia of this whole section right here, which is, I mean, which is in reference to this axis right here. So here, this PXY right here is in reference to this centroidal axis right here, which is XO and YO. And if we want to transfer it to this point right here, what we would be doing is that we would be applying this transfer formula right here. So for us to get this, so let's say that this is to be x sub 1 and y sub 1. So let's say that p, x sub 1, y sub 1 is equal to, so that is to be this one right here, which is negative 6, 5, 6, 2, 5, m, m raised to fourth. And we would be adding this transfer formula right here. So for the transfer formula, this is to be plus a x y and our a right now is to be the total area of this section right here 
which is area 1 plus area 2 plus area 3. So area 1 plus area 2 plus area 3. So for us to have a faster solution, I would just be copying it here. So our total area right now is to be, well, 30 times 5 times 3. So 30 times 5 times 3. So our answer here would be 450 mm squared. So with that, this is to be 450 mm squared times, so what would be our barred x? So our barred x would be from this point right here up until the centroid of this one right here. So that is to be um, 30 mm minus 5 mm over 2, which is 27.5. So 27.5 mm. And for our bar y, that is to be from this distance right here up until this distance right here. I mean this point right here, which is just half of 40 mm. So half of 40 mm is equal to 20 mm. And solving for this once right here, our new value for p x1 y1 would now be equal to. So looking at the calculator to your left. That is to be negative 65625 plus 450 times 27.5 times um, 20. That is equal to 1875 millimeters raised to 4. So this is another approach. And as you can see here in this part right here, we have the same answer. So different approach, but we have the same answer. So there.